Oh, <laughs> I was already, how, eight and a half minutes. I accidentally hit the record button, eight and a half minutes. <sighs> Whatever, I can edit it out. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody? Dope, you're doing well. I'm great. I started to get into a bunch of yard work and realized I should probably pick up the camera and bring y'all along for that since, you know, this is a gardening channel after all. Oh, well, we're gonna do that. There we go. Sometimes I get into this mode. I'm in this mode a lot where I just take on projects and just go, 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 go. I think we go through this every single summer and then I talk about how that can make it difficult for filming because you need to take things a little more slowly, set the camera up, change angles, and talk through things. And that's when montages come into place. But sometimes, like in the last video, I get too impatient to even do montages. If you saw the last video, that basically ended with a flat of plants on the table that magically all of a sudden they were all planted because I walked down to the other end to see what I wanted to plant in what spots and then I planted them. So long story short, I have several outlines for Wednesday videos and I don't know, I'm just not really feeling them. I think everybody's going to enjoy them, but I'm still in go mode. I'm not in sit down and talk to the camera mode, even though that's what's been going on for the last, what, 45 seconds to a minute and a half here. People tend to like the list. They like top tens and all of those things. And I do enjoy making them to an extent. I'm just not good at holding still and talking to the camera. So I'm going to figure something out, like a happy medium, on how I'll be able to film those without losing my mind just sitting and staring at a camera. I think it might be fun to do a top 10 of like tropical looking plants or whatever it may be while I pull weeds. That could be fun. Just gotta mix it up a little bit. So what I decided might be fun for this week's video would be to just bring y'all along for what was going to be the start of Saturday's video. And then Saturday's video can be more focused on what Saturday's video was going to be about, which is plant shopping and getting some more containers done. I have some containers I need to get started on here. And uh, I was like this close to planting them up all the way. And I said, stop it, go get the camera, gather the plants. People like the vlogs, go ahead and make it a vlog. So here we are, vlog time, like a mini Saturday vlog. So for starters, I have my favorite, Sun and Patient here. I say that and I haven't even planted this thing yet because I've been waiting to plant it up into what would be a more special container. This is Red Candy Mountain, I believe. Compact Red Candy. Really like it. I have two of them, haven't planted them yet. Wanted them to go in planters that go over there by that door. I talked about what's going on with that door in the last video. And then I also have two Musa Floridas here, both of which need to be planted up. This one right here has got a sad leaf on it that I think I'll need to be cutting off. Even a couple of them. These are pretty much has to do for being repotted. So these were all started from tissue culture. I didn't start the tissue culture. You can get on Etsy and buy tissue culture plants for relatively inexpensive prices. That's how these three, there's two right here, one behind me. The three of them that I have, that's how they came to be. You just get them in a little bag of auger. They're tiny little things. And it's a whole process getting them out of tissue culture and getting them past the scary point where they might blast and die. I was just waiting to make sure that they were well past that stage. And I would say they are well past it. I've also been waiting for it to warm up. I don't like repotting bananas when it's cool out. And it has been a very, very cool year so far. But things started to heat up a few weeks ago and these started to take off with some more growth. So getting them planted up into some containers, I think that will do them good. They should appreciate that. It's just the one in the container. The other one I'm going to put in the ground. So I want to try growing them three different ways so I can report back at the end of the year, which is just in a couple of months. This is a very long, cool spring that we had here. I think it's gonna be a very short summer, but that's okay. This mess over here, it's my little repotting area. I decided since I have the camera out, I'd move the container over to some place that's more, I mean, slightly more attractive. It's a brick wall with a hot tub behind it. It's not all that great to look at. I could pop the hot tub lid open. I don't really want to though, because then I gotta put it back down. It's not that easy to open and close. Spindle palm could use some pruning. It went through it this spring when I moved it outside. I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off. Let it just put its energy forward into pushing up the new spear. There we go. And now I can focus. The dead fronds not bothering me anymore. Get this Musa Florida potted up. Height-wise, I'd say I should add just a little bit more soil into this. Doesn't need a lot, just a little. Probably do two more scoops, maybe three, just because I have to assume that. No, I don't want to put too much in there. I want to be able to give this heavy waterings if I need to. That's good. That's perfect. Want to talk about the soil? Let's talk about the soil. Well, what I have here is a nice fluffy all-purpose potting mix. I've added some sand. If I had to guess how much, I'd say 
know, 10 to 15% of the mix is sand, not any more than that. Then maybe another 5% on bark chips just to help break it up so it's not too compact. Want lots of oxygen to be able to flow around the roots of those plants. And I just sprinkled in some earthworm castings. And then I did like two handfuls of cotton burr compost. This stuff is basically brown gold. It has a lot of good stuff in it that the plants just suck up and love. I would have liked to have added some slow release to this just because the plants I'm going to be using this for are plants that are heavy feeders, but I'm completely out and I figure that's okay, no big deal. I can go grab some. I was planning on running some errands for this weekend's vlog just for some things that I need in the garden. Grab some then and top dress it and mix it in. With a root ball like this, the slow release doesn't even matter all that much, right? The slow release being really far away from the root zone, not all that useful to the plant. It's not gonna do that much for it. And then I was thinking about putting that impatient in here. Wouldn't that look good in that container? Yeah, yes, mm-hmm. That's a good pairing, I like that. That's going to drive me crazy, cut that out. Okay, and then maybe a Creeping Jenny over the front. I like this container, I think it will look good with a Creeping Jenny coming down the side. Although the only Creeping Jenny I have left doesn't look all that hot. How does that look? Does that look okay? Eh, I'm, eh. No, I'd rather not. Nope, not gonna use that. I have a few other containers that I could use that in, but this one, I don't think so. I'm going to need to plant this in here before I put the banana down inside of the container because it has a much larger root ball on it. I wanna make sure that they're the right level with each other. It was, I don't wanna say hesitant, but although hesitant might be the right word, putting an annual in here with the banana to begin with. The bananas like a lot of nutrients and so do annuals. So I'd rather save all the good stuff for the banana tree. I also think that this plant is absolutely beautiful. I think both of these plants are beautiful and I would like to see them growing together. So just say and forget it. I'm going to put them together. There should be more than enough room in this container for both of them. In fact, this banana tree, I would imagine if it is happy, which I think it will be, it's been pretty happy so far, that's going to likely outgrow this container by the end of this growing season for sure. Heck, maybe even just like six weeks, we'll see. Bananas, you know, they grow very, very vigorously. And now that the heat has gotten here, these Musa Floridas are really pushing out growth. The thing is though, when you repot a banana, it's not unusual for them to just sit still for a while. So I won't be surprised at all if this just wants to chill, not do much of anything. I cut off leaves that are starting to yellow and pull back because they're not providing anything to the plant anymore. Nutrients have been exhausted from that. No reason to leave it on there. I want the plant to be focused on putting out new roots, send the oxen back down to the root system by pruning things out and pushing up new growth. You may have noticed, but I was supposed to talk about this already and I forgot. When I was showing the root ball, the thing that I meant to talk about was that the, the root ball, <laughs> that root ball was nice and firm. The reason I prefer to repot at that stage when they're just slightly root bound is because sometimes when you mess with the roots on a banana, the bananas will throw a complete and total fit. You'll repot them, they'll drop their leaves and just look like garbage for several weeks. And then all of a sudden, boom, they start putting out new growth. And before you know it, they look fine again. But because of the nature of this one and the efforts of bringing up tissue culture and everything, I was like, I would like to minimize risks with it. But if it were a typical banana, I don't think I'd be anywhere near as cautious with it. I'd still be cautious with it. Just not as, it's not as much of a loss. You know, I've already put all the time into getting these things nice and big. I don't want to set them back any further. Okay, and I would like to have that container sitting right in here, in this spot. So I'm going to need to pull the Actually, that's not going to work. I could move the bougainvillea. I wanted it to go basically right where this bougainvillea, sorry, bougainvillea, bad habit. I always call it a bougainvillea. Also toyed with the idea of putting this bougainvillea in the container that I have that banana in. Wouldn't that have been beautiful? It would have been really nice looking, but I didn't, well, I couldn't make up my mind, so I just decided not to do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> looks beautiful. All right, it's not perfect, but I talked about in the last video how I'm redoing this whole area, and I don't want to start tearing apart and doing all kinds of crazy stuff to it just yet. That would be a big waste of time right now. Do you need to modify the drip? You can see they're not spaced out properly. All three of those are supposed to be in that long container and then one in that yucca container, but I decided to spread them out through here because I didn't plant up the blue container this year. And I need to move that. I could move it. That's not what I was planning on doing. Fine, I'll move it. All right, slight improvement, nothing drastic. Still need to clean those steps off, but the steps, are, they're being replaced. I don't, it doesn't matter. This is going to get afternoon shade and morning sun. That's what I want because of the variegation on here. And it's just been Planted. I want to pop the plant into blazing hot sun when it's just been repotted. Those roots aren't established yet. It's not in full dry for pulling up water. So that's why it'll be much happier like this. And this whole entire corner is kind of a TLC spot as you would 
may notice. I call that a fitting placement for it. Could move around later on in the summer, perhaps, but I want to see at least probably three more leaves pop out of it. I know that it's nice and sturdy. Speaking of sturdiness, the spot also very sheltered from the wind. That's another reason that I want this right here. Saw that root ball in proportion to the entire plant. Nothing really to brag about, right? Not something that's going to provide any stability, so needed to make sure that it's not going to get knocked around by the wind. Should also mention the drip head that's on there is a variable drip head, so it lets out a fan of water that sprays down, kind of in the shape of an umbrella. You can twist the top, adjust the size of that spray, and I made sure that that is placed where it's partially hitting the root ball, and then a largely outside the root ball because I want to encourage those roots to grow out. With the banana this isn't usually a problem because they'll grow pretty much no matter what you do as long as you keep them watered and it's warm. I'm talking about outdoors right? I know indoors bananas can be a whole different story but with a lot of drip heads if you just put it directly above the root ball on a plant that's new sometimes it takes a lot longer to get those roots out and moving because the water is so direct. Not always doing what it needs to to moisten the surrounding soil which is what would encourage those roots to move outward so that should be good for the banana i'll be seeing it around you'll know what's going on with it i did also want to mention that i haven't been giving these really any special treatment other than sun exposure that's pretty much it so if you're wondering no i have found outside of getting them out of the tissue culture growing them just like i have all my other bananas it's been the same i almost said simple it's not simple having bananas indoors which is where these were for the first few months that i had them it's never an easy thing to do right did you hear my voice crack it's, it's, it's what can it adult puberty it's happening it can be tricky indoors i'm lucky enough to have my garage turned into a grow space where it's very very warm and uh, aside from the ones that are coming out of tissue culture I tend to keep the bananas more on the dry side. I just water them when they look thirsty. It's easy to tell when a banana looks thirsty. You can even see on these bajus right here, they're not actually thirsty right now. They've just been shredded up by the storms. But the leaves look more limp, and as soon as I start to see that, that's when I give them water. That's how the first few weeks of having them inside goes after, you know, fall and have to move them inside. Then I get a gauge of how often they need to be watered, and it's generally like every seven days, something like that. That's because it's very warm in there. In the house, when I have bananas inside, I give them as much light as I can, and they get watered maybe twice a month, as long as it's nice and cool, which it usually is in my house. That's generally the conditions for the indoors of my home typically pretty cool inside and that's when things get more difficult when i say cool i mean like 68 degrees fahrenheit to 72 fahrenheit somewhere in there i know some people keep their homes much warmer than that some people will keep them more cool than that you have things to consider like drafty windows all that that's when the bananas are much more difficult so i don't want to say that these have been easy because that's not the case right my situation isn't really all that comparable to everybody else's i was more curious about these when it comes to growing them outdoors just like a regular banana tree and treating them like i do all my other banana trees which so far i've been doing once i got them potted up into real soil that is and out of the tissue culture and sturdy not the fastest of growers but that's what i expected from them i do think that that one that just potted up one that i just potted up should take off now that's in a much larger pot and this one should do the same thing so I had said that I wanted to put this one in the ground. I wanted the comparison of the one in the container over there. Then I have another one in a container over here that's getting slightly different light from the other ones and then having one in the ground. I am a little apprehensive to do that only because my sister has a puppy and another dog who they've been in the videos before, Louie and Nala, Ridgeback. They're not garden people. They don't have a garden. They haven't trained their dogs to have the garden. And whenever they come over here, there's usually some damage with the plants. I mean, heck, Nala was here just a couple days ago and she became obsessed with this coconut palm pot and just kept jamming her face down inside of it and knocking all the sand out of the container. And the bromeliad right next to it, she's like, hey, this is cool. And started taking her paw and just smacking the crap out of it. I don't know why, but she was really into that plant. Good dog said no and stop it. And she stopped, but still, because I would like to be able to bring all of these inside for the winter, or at least two of them, because the one that's over here in the queen palm planter that's going to be tricky to bring inside that's gonna be rooted way down into the roots of that queen palm and i don't know if i'll be able to get it dug up so i'm thinking maybe the other one i should probably put in a container too i don't know y'all let me know what you think you can tell it's starting to get late so i should i should have started filming earlier but i did the thing where i stared at my list and i was like what should i film did i just start on the vlog and then it's, oh, here we are but regardless this needs to get repotted the spot that i had wanted to put this in the ground is up here on this hill and i just i don't know the dogs really run through there when they're all playing yeah the arbs are dead that's just it happens it's not a good year for arbs temperatures all over the place they were not happy plants so for now i guess i'll just put it in another container the lighter color that we're seeing on here and saw on the one that i just potted up 
it needs nutrients. They're not getting enough from that blend anymore. May as well bump it up into something bigger. Not too much bigger. I'm looking around here. Like a one gallon. I think a one gallon would be perfect for this. So I don't wanna pot it into something much larger like I did with that other one and then go, hey, you know, I'm gonna put it over here in this other spot and then not be able to do that because it needs to root out into its new container. I end up tearing out all the little tiny baby feeder roots that the plant has put out. And this is a good size. It should root into this in just really probably a couple of weeks now that it's July and things are warm again and I'll be able to have it up on drip. And then maybe I'll be able to put it where I would like to if it just puts on enough size so I'd put sturdy enough that if a puppy runs past it's not going to snap the plant. I know that looks like it's planted uh, well it doesn't look like it's planted a smidge deep it is planted a smidge deep the soil is going to burp some when I water it and let it be a scotch full and that way it can have some room for air bubbles and whatnot to work their way out of the containers. I've been spending so much time looking at the trunks on these because I think that they have beautiful trunks or pseudo stems really that foliage though that's where it's at. These are beautiful plants. Now, I've grown the uh, AAs, A-A-I-I, -I, however you want to say it, many, many, many years ago when they were slightly more affordable, kind of. Those are one plant where when the rare plants took off, the costs on the variegated bananas absolutely skyrocketed. However, the A-A-I-I, it did get more pricey. And when it came back down, it's back to about where it was. The cheapest I ever saw them was probably, I don't know, circa, mid early 2000s between 2005 2010 at the cheapest you could get them for about 80 to 90 dollars which back then was a ton of money for a banana plant but it was more typical for them to be about two to three hundred dollars that's what they are right now the florida only observation i can really give on it thus far is that it seems to be much more sturdy for right now i'm going to tuck this down here where it's going to get some shade and it has a drip right by it seemingly much more <laughs> sturdy than the I, I, but again, I didn't have this set up with all the heat and everything, so who's to say? But outdoors even, those little plants haven't skipped a beat other than maybe needing to be repotted about a week and a half ago. I'm a little bit behind on that. Two weeks even. They're bananas. They're going to be fine. That's those I.I.s always had to be much more cautious with them. Okay, I think I was going to put up some hydrangea trees, but I'm going to go ahead and wait. Only because I want to see what I might find when I'm out shopping at the nurseries, which will be going on in this weekend's vlog. So just hold tight for that. Gonna get some more containers done back here with some perennials. Talk about what I got done over the weekend in the garden. Planted a ton of hydrangeas. All those game changers got, I, I just said it, I just ruined it. And y'all get the point. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below, say hi. Tips, tricks, suggestions, your experiences with the Moose of Florida versus the AAII. I know some people say they're basically the same. They do seem to be pretty much the same. I don't know if I remember that reddish outline. I'll show you. There's a reddish pink outline on the foliage. I don't remember that with the AAs or the IIs, but it's been a few years. That might be a characteristic difference. Variegation does seem more subtle on the Florida, but these are also small. And the temperatures have been wacky and all over the place, so again, hard to say. Been good growers, though, in comparison to what I would get with those other ones in the past, you know, 15 years ago. Much more sturdy. Everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. I had to repeat that like five times because the camera wouldn't focus, my neighbors are outside, or they think I'm crazy. That's fine, who cares? They're a little bit right. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.